Good morning, BSC English 2B. We are Group 1 and we are here to discuss and give examples on teaching grammar using situational contexts. But first, what is grammar? Grammar are rules of a language governing the sound words, sentences, and other elements as well as their combination and interpretation. It is the whole system and structure of a language or of language in general, usually taken as consisting of syntax and morphology, including inflections, and sometimes also the phonology and semantics. The definition of situational context will be discussed by Mr. King Mangili. Thank you, Mr. Malto, for that wonderful introduction. Your energy is beyond matched. Now, let's identify what is the meaning of situational context. A situational grammar presentation provides a context or a story. Firstly, it elicits language, sentences, or even points from students as reference without heavily focusing on the grammar point too much. After that, the instructor then introduces the grammar rules to support the language that was already given by students, reinforcing language with correct usage. So, to make it concise, a situational grammar presentation creates a situation where the students will need to utilize grammar. Teaching grammar to students is somehow hard, and teachers should have a very long string of patience on teaching the students. Sometimes, students find learning grammar to be boring and lame because it is so plain and it doesn't give them some motivation to speak or allow them to interact with the discussion. To avoid this, we should teach grammar using situational contexts like, for example, the topic is prepositional words and a preposition usually precedes a noun or a pronoun. Here's a list of commonly used prepositions like, Above, across, against, along, among, around, at, before, behind, in, on, to, toward, and etc. Teachers might use different techniques to teach the students, but here's an exciting example on teaching prepositions. The teachers can start by showing a picture of a kitchen. The kitchen was filled with various types of kitchen equipments or objects. After it, the teacher can ask the students to locate the following objects in the picture. She will provide a separate list of objects on her presentation that can help the students to locate the specific object that she will ask. This will make the students construct various sentences and use different prepositional words to describe the location of the particular object. Like, for example, the teacher asks for the location of a blender on the kitchen. A student might answer, Sir, the blender is on the countertop. Or, Sir, the blender is inside the microwave. Or, Sir, the blender is located between the strainer and the spoon. The teachers and students can be creative on using different prepositions by creating various sentences for one object. Along with the discussion, if a student uses the preposition incorrectly, the teacher can discuss about the proper use of it. In this way, the classroom will be lively and active because students can interact with the discussion and they can feel that they were included. Some of us may think that we can only learn and teach grammar. The rules of language governing sounds, words, elements, and sentences if we are in school, like reading a book about grammar and listening to a teacher discussing the lesson traditionally about the rules of the grammar. But who would have thought that we can learn and teach grammar by the use of situational context? Let me give you an example. Imperative verbs, also known as bossy verbs. These are the words that tell people what to do. Imperative verbs create an imperative sentence. It gives order and command. When the teacher asks how to make pancakes step by step, and then the students will probably answer, first, we need to get all the ingredients and mix them all in a bowl. And then, we can cook a small amount of butter in a frying pan. And then the other students will answer. And then, we can flip the pancake when the bottom part is already brown. And then finally, we can add toppings. What are the verbs used in this? The add, 
mix, cook, and then get. In situational context, the students can be involved and participate in the discussion. And this will be an amazing and exciting discussion than the traditional explanation of the grammar. Another great topic in teaching grammar is the modal verbs. An auxiliary verb helps the main verb and is also called a helping verb. With auxiliary verbs, you can write sentences in different tenses, moods, or voices. These are the examples of auxiliary verbs. We have be, do, have, will, shall, would, should, can, could, may, might, must, ought, and etc. A good example of teaching modal verb is to explain or give rules and regulations. It may be explaining the rules to someone or explaining the rules of the school or even the inside or even inside the classroom. So, for example, the teacher's given group activity to the students is to have a role play. Let's say the pandemic was over and we are now having the face-to-face -face class again. So, the teacher asks the students to perform or to show or to share their experiences during the pandemic when they are going out, like going to church, mall, or some crowded places. Of course, the things that students will never forget are the safety protocols and that are always reminded to us whenever we go to crowded places. So, what the students will do is they will show you the rules that show you the rules that must be followed like when you go out, you have to wear your face mask properly and you also need to have a face shield when you go out. Then when someone is not wearing a face mask properly or does not have a face mask, the student may tell to his groupmate that, hey, you must wear a face mask or you could get a virus if you don't wear a face mask. It emphasizes the word must and the tone of the word can change the meaning of a sentence. It only tells that you should really wear a face mask or else you will get fined because here in our municipality, we are required to wear a face mask and a face shield. Because of the role playing, the students were able to demonstrate the model verbs and their dialogue and they learned what model verbs are for. Hello everyone! Familiar words like usually, sometimes, often, later, never, yet, now, today are some examples of adverbs of frequency. But how can we teach this type of adverb in a situational context? Let's find out. Adverb of frequency describes how often an action happens. Our daily routine can be best described by this type of words. At the start of the lesson, students will be given sheets of paper with different time schedules within the day. Then, the teacher will add list of familiar verbs that corresponds with the time. For example, at 7 o'clock, you get up. At 8 o'clock, you eat breakfast. And then at 9, you go to work. Teacher will then model his or her list of daily activities to the class with two or more sentences. Like, I usually get up at 7 o'clock. I always go to work at 8 o'clock. I usually come home at 5 o'clock. I often watch TV at 8 o'clock. From the sentences generated from the teacher's daily activities, he or she will then ask the students questions. For example, Jerome, what do I often do at 8 o'clock? Jerome will answer, you often watch TV. The teacher will continue asking questions to students about his or her daily routine while paying special attention to the placements of the adverbs of frequency when students are answering. On the next part, teachers will ask the students to fill up the sheets about their daily habits and routines and ask someone to read his or her daily activities in class. Teachers can do this to the rest of the class, allowing them to make mistakes and correct them afterwards. But remember, teachers should still pay special attention to the placement of the adverbs of frequency within the sentences that the students generated. On the last part of the discussion, teacher will again ask each student 
to read about their daily routines to the class. After each student has finished reading his daily activities, he will then ask another student questions about the student's daily habits. For example, the teacher will ask Jerome to read his daily activities, and Jerome will read. And then, the teacher again will call somebody to answer the question about Jerome's daily activities. And this exercise will continue around the room with each of the students with paying special attention to the placement of the adverb of frequency and the correct usage of the third person singular. So, before I give another example of teaching grammar in a situational context, let me discuss first what is the meaning of idiomatic expression. Idiomatic expressions are a type of informal language that have a meaning, different from the meaning of the words in the expression. For instance, a piece of speech. This is not totally a slice of speech to eat. It simply means that it's as easy as eating one. Another is stabbed in the back. Literally, stabbing someone in the back could bring someone to jail. That's definitely not what this idiom means. Being stabbed in the back means that you've been betrayed by someone who you thought you could trust. And last example, break a leg. You might be scared when you hear this idiom, but when someone uses this idiom, they are just actually wishing the person good luck. So now, Let's take a look back on our elementary days. Do you have this kind of experience where your teacher assigned all of you to have some daily weather reports? So, that's a great example in teaching grammar in a situational context. In a classroom, the teacher divides the students into four groups and gives them some tasks about daily weather reports before starting their proper discussion or lesson, but the teacher will put some twists where the reporter should use the forms of verbs to be idiomatic expression. One of the idioms that the student or the reporter can use if they have a bad weather condition would be a training cat and dog. This refers to a storm with wind and heavy rain. So, in this context, the students can learn what idiomatic expression is and how idioms are used in a sentence. Hello and good morning everyone. Before we go to the topic, we have a situation where we lost a pencil, a eraser, pen or a marker. And you are going to ask someone, how will you respond by providing them a question? Then student answer, where is my pen? How am I going to find it? What will I do? When did you saw it? What am I going to do? Then the teacher proceeds to the topic. Today, our topic is all about question formation, where we can use question formation to have a proper format in asking a question. Question words are function words used to ask a question and they are the first word when you are asking a question. Such as question words are what, where, when, and etc. Auxiliary. These are the words that help the sentence to have a complete sentence or question and also known as the helping verb. Such as example are should, could, will, and so on. Subject is the person or doer of the action. Such an example is the I, you, he, she, and so on. Verb is the action word like talking, running, and talk, walk, dance, and so on. As you can see in the question formation format, the first is the question word plus auxiliary plus subject and plus verb. For example, what are you thinking about? What is the question word? R is the auxiliary, subject is you, and the verb is the thinking. 
the subject is ing, the ended verb must be ending with ing, such as talking, giving, and so on. And if the subject is he, she, it, we, you, they, the ending verb is infinitive, which means that any action verb is appropriate. If your question word is which, whose, how much, how many, you must apply a noun before you proceed to the auxiliary, then subject, then verb. Such example is which bag should I buy? The question word is which, the bag is the noun, the auxiliary is should, the subject is I, and the bird is buy. In question word, which, whose, how much, how many, we must add a noun before we proceed to the auxiliary. If the auxiliary is have or has and had, the verb must be past participle. For example, how long have you been running? How is the question word? Long is the noun. Auxiliary is have, subject is you, and been is the verb or the past participle verb. Now, as per the theme of this topic, interaction between the students and the teacher is very essential as mentioned. Now I'll give you a great example for this approach. Say the topic to be discussed is about collective nouns. Now, what are collective nouns, you say? Here are some examples. The words herd, flock, bunch, and group. These are nouns that refer to a groups of people, animal, or things. So then, an instructor can present or they can ask the students to give a type of animal, or to give a profession, or even to give an object. Let's say one student said cattle. The instructor then can say a herd of cattle. One said turkey. One then can say a flock of turkeys. For an object, one says key. So one can say a bunch of keys. For the profession, the students say dancer so it can be a group of dancers so on and so forth utilizing this approach in teaching grammar promotes interaction and captivates students attention making learning so much more enjoyable